Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Good morning. I am Kathy. For those of you that are, are quite new, I'm married to James. We've got two girls, Alice, who's eight, nearly, Eve, who's five. And uh, I spend a lot of time downstairs doing church, downstairs with the children, which is an absolute pleasure. Um, but today, um, we are continuing through Jesus' famous sermon, the Sermon on the mount from Matthew 5, otherwise known as the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes are nine principles for living in the kingdom of God. Because the Bible tells us that when we invite Jesus into our lives, we step into a new kingdom. And it's a new way of thinking And it's a new way of acting. And it's a new way of doing life. And it's a new way of seeing the world. And it's often a countercultural way of living. It's different from the way other people live who don't know Jesus. And the beatitude I've been given today is the penultimate one, which is, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. What's a peacemaker? What is a peacemaker? The Bible uses another term in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 that says this, ministers of reconciliation. We are ministers of reconciliation. We are to be people that bring reconciliation. We are to bring people, be people that bring people together instead of pushing them apart. We are to be people that minister peace, that bring restoration, that bring repair, and that reconcile people to God. And Jesus promises this, if you are a peacemaker, if you minister reconciliation, If you minister peace and healing and repair, you will look like God. Amen. You will look like God. You will look like your heavenly father. People can see that you're his child. They will see him in you. They will be called the children of God of God. It's interesting in a family, if you perhaps look at the Hamptons, there's loads of them, isn't there? And they all look slightly different, but they all bear the image of their parents in slightly different ways. And and so it is with us, we bear God's image in our own unique way. And when we sow peace, we show ourselves to be like God. We show ourselves to be like our Father. What a beautiful thing. So what does that say about who God is? God is about reconciliation. God wants peace. God wants unity. God cares about us getting on with one another. And most importantly, God wants to be reconciled to all the people he's created on this earth. Let's just think about that for a moment. God wants to be reconciled to all the people he's created on this earth. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called 
the children of God. Being a peacemaker has to do with restoring broken relationships with others. And you know, some of you will have a calling on your life to be a peacemaker. Some of you will have a calling on your life to be a peacemaker on a larger scale, perhaps on a um, a regional scale or a national scale or even on a global scale. And these are people that see divides and are grieved about them in their spirit, have a burden about them in their spirit. These might be divides in the church or racial divides or language divides or divides because of disability or differences political divides, religious divides, divides between rich and poor, and divides due to war and conflict. And if you've got a calling on your life to be a peacemaker, you are burdened by these divides. And you um, have a staring in your heart. Perhaps some of you are are feeling a bit of a staring in your heart again about this. God's reminding you about this burden that's on your heart to bridge divides. And you know, now it's, it's easy to speak into issues. You don't have to be um, a diplomat or a politician. You know, with wisdom and discernment, social media provides great opportunities to be a voice, to speak into these things and not just to point out the problems because you know what there's loads of people out there pointing out problems but there's not many people talking about forgiveness there's not many people talking about grace there's not many people talking about empathy and understanding and bringing people together instead of pushing them apart maybe that's you maybe that's you Can you be a voice that talks about forgiveness and reconciliation? Wouldn't that be countercultural? Wouldn't that be countercultural? That's what being a peacemaker is all about. If that's you, I really want you to come forward for prayer at the end because I'd like to commission you in that. I'd like to pray over you in that and ask God for wisdom as to how you move forward in that. But I want to move on to talk about being a peacemaker at home now. Being a peacemaker on the ground, in our workplace, in our homes, in our, in our church, in our neighborhoods. What does it look like being a, a peacemaker every day on the ground? Well, there are three things that a peacemaker does. Number one, a peacemaker sees things from another's point of view. A peacemaker sees things from another's point of view. And I just could you put on that optical illusion? There's like a picture of an optical illusion here. Okay. What do you see? What can people see from this? What can you see, James? A woman. A woman? What kind of woman? Uh a fancy woman. A fancy woman. Put your hand up if you could see a fancy woman, whatever a fancy woman is. Can anyone see anything else? Paul? There's an old woman there. There's an old woman. Put your hands up if you can see the old woman. Took me ages to see the old woman. If you look at the white bit at the bottom, that's her chin. Um, or it looks like a young woman kind of turning away. But there you go. Can you see, can you see it? it? Takes a while. I'll leave it up there for a bit. No one will listen to me if we do. Okay. Isn't it interesting how two people can look at the same thing and see something totally differently? And um, a peacemaker is able to see something from another person's point of view, even if you don't agree with that person. Even if you don't agree with their position, you're able to accept that that is a fact for them. That's the way they see it. And as peacemakers, we can help other people see things from another's point of view. Now, some of us find this easier than others. 
And if you're someone that finds it really hard to see things from another's point of view, ask God to increase your understanding in that area. Because people need to feel understood, don't they? People need to feel understood. And we don't have to agree with people to understand them. Amen. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome about this because they were having fights, the church in Rome, every five minutes because some people thought that it was okay to eat everything. All foods were fine to eat. And others, others felt some foods were unclean. And they kept getting into fights, you know, what can we eat, what can we not eat, what's okay to eat, what's not okay to eat. And they couldn't get on because of this issue. And Paul wrote to them and he said, stop fighting about this. Romans 14 verse 13 to 15 says this, therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I am convinced that nothing is unclean in itself, but if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person, it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. In other words, do all you can not to wind each other up. Do whatever you can not to wind each other up if it's not a major issue. You know, sometimes we do need to be courageous and we do need to say when something is right or wrong. But if it's a minor issue, we can choose not to upset the peace and not make statements just to be right. We don't have to be right all the time. When we're a peacemaker, we lay down our selfish desires to be right about everything to have the last word, to have our say. There's a vineyard song called Surrender, which says this, I'm laying down my rights. I'm giving up my pride for the promise of new life. God might be requiring some of us to lay down our pride today. We don't always have to be right. We can follow the way of the peacemaker. So number one, peacemakers see things from another's perspective. Number two, peacemakers change the atmosphere. Peacemakers change the atmosphere. Romans 12 verse 21 says this, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Can we read that aloud together? Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. I'm just going to invite James to share really briefly about a time when he used to work in Barclays Bank. Some of you might not know this. And, um, and God really, really um, spoke to him about how he could change the atmosphere. Yeah, I worked in a call centre no one really wanted to work there, and uh, but there was a lot of people really who were just unpleasant at times, and so they would um, often be different groups gossiping about others. And there was one situation where um, uh, one of my friends, who's a, a great guy, was just going through a lot in his personal life. Um, as a result, not being overly um, receptive in terms of how he was coming across. And as a result, upset a lot of people. And there was almost, everyone was against this one person. And there was a real just kind of uh, anger towards him, but no one else knew. And so what God put on my heart was to be a peacemaker in my workplace. So it was to actually listen to the, the guy who was going through a lot of stuff, but then to go and speak to the other people and to explain, not in depth, but just to explain, look, they're going through some stuff. 
can you make sure that you give them a bit more grace? And what happened is that that, that, that worked really well. But what's interesting is when peace is made, the peacemaker's often forgotten. Um, but I was able to bring peace in that situation that, that then opened up doors where I became the agony aunt where everyone would come to. Um, and over the, 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 the years I was there, I became the, the constant peacemaker, even between managers above me, to be a peacemaker. And uh, it brings great joy, but often not great. You don't get noticed highly, but God sees what you're doing. And uh, that not only makes people bless, but also it makes, when you're in a peaceful environment, it makes going to work or home or whatever more pleasant. Amen. So uh, being a peacemaker doesn't mean taking on the problems of the world. It doesn't mean taking on everybody's problems, but it does mean that you change the atmosphere. Peacemakers add grace and kindness and humor and sometimes distraction into an environment, and they bring peace wherever they go. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. So peacemakers, they, who can remember? They, yeah, they see things from another's point of view. Peacemakers number two, they change the atmosphere. Great, people are listening. That's so encouraging. And number three, Peacemakers help to reconcile people to God. They're ministers of reconciliation. None of us can and no, none of us should force someone into a relationship with God. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. But we can be part of someone's journey in moving them a step closer to God. Some of us will be able to take people over the finish line. But so a lot of us will be used by God to bring somebody one step closer in their relationship with him. How can we do that? Very briefly, two things. Set a good example and be prepared. Set a good example and be prepared. 1 Peter 3 verse 15. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you, to give the reason for the hope you have. Do this with gentleness and respect. Set a good example. Be prepared. Have a few things in your mind. What has God done for you? Have a few things in your mind. What's he done for you? How has he changed you? Be prepared. Set a good example. Peacemakers. They help see things from another's point of view. They change the atmosphere. They reconcile people to God. But what if reconciliation feels impossible? What if reconciliation feels impossible? There's a situation in my own life at the moment that feels impossible. And I'm praying about that at the moment. What if you are the injured party and the other person will never apologize? How do you be a peacemaker then? What if you've tried to sort it out, but the other person's having none of it? How do you be a peacemaker then? What do you do then? The answer is pray. Go deep and quiet with God. And it might involve fasting. It might involve praying in tongues. It might involve crying out to God in the middle of the night. Or it might involve just saying, God, I just leave that with you. I just give that to you. Every time a bitter thought comes into your mind. Erica was talking about taking our thoughts captive. Every time a bitter thought comes into your mind, God, I give that to you. Or an angry thought, God, I just leave that with you. A sad thought, I give that to you. Romans 12 verse 18 says this, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. As far as it depends on you. We can't control another person's heart, can we? But we can submit our own heart to God. 
and get our hearts as right as we possibly can before God at that moment. You know, forgiveness is a journey to be walked through with God. It's not an instant thing. And uh, it's a bit like an onion. There's many, many layers to it as well. But God's not looking for perfection. He remembers we're dust. But we are to take every thought captive. And we are to be careful what comes out of our mouth. And let me say, I was being so challenged by this word, preparing it, because this is not an easy thing for me. I'm an external processor. I, all kinds of things come out of my mouth. And um, it's not easy. It's easy to be a peacemaker when you haven't been hurt. And it's easy to be a peacemaker when you haven't been wounded or rejected or damaged. And the urge is to get our own back, to have our say, to fight or to be bitter. But we are to be of a different kingdom. Amen. We're to be of a different kingdom than that. The kingdom of God. Your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. We're going to sing a song in a minute. And we're going to reflect on what God's been saying to us personally. For some of us, God's going to be staring up a call to action that's been dormant, perhaps a calling on our life to be a peacemaker, to speak into issues, to bring forgiveness. For some of us, there'll be a sense of conviction. You know, perhaps it's not been, we've not been finding it easy to be a light and we've been swept up in, in the crowd and we haven't been changing the atmosphere. For some of us, God might have planted some creative ideas of how to bring people together or to sow peace into a situation. For some, there'll be a call to pray. For some of us, we may just feel hurt and we may be in pain and we just don't know what to do next. God's asking you to give it to him today. Amen. We're going to read this song, I Surrender, and the words go like this. I'm giving you my heart and all that is within. I lay it all down for the sake of you, my king. I'm giving up my dreams. I'm laying down my rights. I'm giving up my pride for the promise of new life. And I surrender all to you, all to you. And I surrender all to you, all to you. Amen.